Jay's going to show that for you. And, um, some of the things that Jay has different than the regalia that we uh, grass dancers are wearing is, uh, well, he has a bunch of feathers on his back. We call that a bust. We say that those feathers, it represents those tail feathers of that prairie chicken. Has anyone ever seen a prairie chicken before? Yeah, they're delicious, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, you, need a, you need a few of them to fill you up. If you haven't seen a prairie chicken um, in Ontario, we don't have them here. I don't know if there's any zoos that have them, but they're, they're little wee birds. Um, they sort of resemble the, the prairie chicken or the ruffled grouse. I mean, uh, the ruffled grouse we have here in Ontario, and those are delicious too. But um, just like the partridges we have here in Ontario, they do a dance, usually around this time of year in the fall. And it's the male prairie chickens that do this dance. And they do it, this dance to try to impress the, the female prairie chickens. And it's really interesting to watch when they, when they do this special dance. So that's what this dance depicts. It is the, the dance of this, these uh, blue wee birds. They say the style of dance uh, that the men do is it's a, a warrior style of dance. Another thing that uh, Jay's carrying, it's a little bit different than us grass dancers, is his mirror. These prairie chickens, when they dance, are sort of vain. Um, and they really are into themselves, and I think uh, they're all in. <laughs> so when Jay dances, he carries this mirror and kind of looks at himself dancing. And admires himself. But uh, they say long ago, when uh, you know the fur trade used to happen, these were very valuable tools for our warriors, these, these mirror sticks. And uh, not only so they made sure they look good when they go out hunting or in battle, but uh, they were also useful tools. And they wouldn't work very well here in Ontario. Out on the plains, if you're in a hunting party and someone's made maybe a few miles ahead of you, and you're a few miles behind, if you don't know where the other guy is because it's so far, this mirror come in handy because you reflect the sunlight. And they, they see that reflection off in the distance and say, oh, that's where he is. But that guy got lost hunting out there. So. <laughs> they were useful tools to use out there in the open uh, grasslands. They wouldn't work so well here in Ontario. We have too many trees and hills and valleys. So um, that's also something unique that Jay carries. So this is the prairie chicken dance, and Jay's going to show it for you.
be a little hungry watching them uh, dance like those curry chickens. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, the next style of dance we're going to have for you um, is uh, Barry's going to demonstrate uh, the men's traditional style of dance. Now, Barry's style of regalia is a little bit different than the men's traditional style of dance we have here in Ontario. And uh, he's a very beautiful regalia. And it, uh, it's the men's southern style of uh, regalia. So in the southern states, some of the, the southern tribes down there, um, they, they would wear regalia in this sort of style that, that Barry is wearing. If you notice, um, the, the men's northern style of dance, they usually dance with a bustle on their back. But the southern style, they don't wear a bustle. He has some very beautifully hand-crafted conchos on his back. As well, he has some very nice ribbon work, uh, which is indicative of the southern style of dance. He's also carrying some different types of feathers. Some of the feathers, the colorful ones, the blue, the yellow, the orange, and uh, those, those feathers, they come from the macaw, which is a bird we don't have around here, unless maybe go to a pet store. <laughs> um, but he's also carrying um, an eagle wing feather. And uh, the reason that our, our dancers, uh, almost all styles, carry eagle feathers in their dance. And they say when we dance, we carry these eagle feathers because it represents our connectedness to Mother Earth. And around here, the eagle is the bird that flies the highest out of all the birds that we have around in these parts. And they say that the eagle is a messenger that carries our prayers up to the Creator. And the eagle also watches over us brings messages to the Creator about what we're doing, what we're behaving in. <laughs> so um, that's why us dancers, myself included, we wear these eagle feathers. And, uh, anyways, Barry's going to demonstrate the men's traditional style of dance. The men's traditional style of dance is a storytelling dance. It may depict the story of going out to battle. It may tell a story of a time going out hunting, maybe being successful in the hunt. So let's see what kind of story that Barry tells us here when we do this. The style of song that we're going to sing, it's a southern style of singing. So the types of songs we've sung for you so far, we sing high when we sing. That's the northern style of singing. But when we do the southern songs, it's a totally different style of singing. We sing much deeper. And, uh, anyways, this is the southern style of men tradition today.
story about the crow hop and how this dance came to be. Menus will have the opportunity to come join us and dance this style. So the crow hop, um, it's a fairly new style of dancing as far as our, our different styles of dancing go. It's a, a style of dance that both our, our men and women can participate in. And basically when we dance, our, we move our feet to imitate the movements of the crow. And there's a few different stories about how this, this uh, style of dance originated. And I'll share one of the versions that I know very well. You see, um, if you've been watching our dancing so far, you notice that we move our feet to the beat of the drum. And the crow hop is very much like that as well. I say long ago there was this man who tried to dance. And whenever he tried to dance to our, our songs, he, he couldn't dance to the beat of the drum. He was always a little bit off. And of course, uh, you know, a lot of people uh, made fun of him for this. And, and uh, you know, we often are known for our sense of humor and teasing. So they, they often uh, made fun of him and, and made him the butt of their jokes sometimes. He would say, one time this man, he went out into the bush and he was sitting out there all by himself, just collecting his thoughts. And then he noticed this crow that wasn't too far away from him. He started watching this crow. And he was watching how that crow was moving around, how it was moving its feet. And he, he thought to himself, how interesting to know this crow just knocks around and moves its feet in such that, in that unusual way. He started imitating the movements of that crow. How it, moved its feet. Then he went back to the people in his village and showed them this new dance that imitates the crow. And the people were interested in the style of dance that he was showing them. So the drummers, they made, made uh, special songs that had a different type of drum beat. And the people, when they danced, they would move their feet to the special drum beat. And they would, that's how the crow hop came to be. So I'm going to give you a little demonstration about how to do the crow hop. And, um, you might find a little bit of humor in the way I show you, because the way I describe it is like, um, almost like jogging on the spot. And I'm sure uh, all of you have tried that before. So if our drummers can give us a drum beat uh, for the roll-off. So you guys are welcome to come out and try that. If you go to jog on the spot, you get a good roll-off. song that we welcome you to come out and, and dance to. It's fun. Good exercise as well. And um, so this is a crow hop. And um, after a while, if you get those basic steps, you get a little bit fancy with it as well. So it's one of my favorite songs to dance to.
And the next song we're going to do is a round dance. We're uh, two step. I've asked Thunder to lead this song. And it's very easy. It's even easier than the pro pump. Basically, all you have to do is uh, come in behind Thunder or the person who comes in behind them, hold their hand, <laughs> and follow in. Basically, follow the leader by holding hands. And it's not that hard to do. It might get a little tricky if the person you're holding hands had sweaty palms or something. But other than that, it's not that hard. And I don't think Thunder has sweaty palms. So I encourage you all to get up and come join in behind Thunder. <laughs> and I want to ask, uh, make sure you don't go in front of, come in behind. Okay, in this uh, song, it's a Brown dance song. The drum beat's a little bit different. It resembles the sound of a heartbeat. And this song is also known as the friendship dance. Because when we come in here in this circle and dance together, we come in here as friends. It doesn't matter what nation we are from, or what part of the world we come from or originate from, we're all in the circle as friends and as one. So I encourage you all to come in and join us for this round dance song. So if this is your first time round dancing, then you gotta you gotta dance today, okay? So this is the first time watching it. We got Beth Koski out there in the corner by the playground. Beth, come on out. <laughs> Beth Koski. Fast moccasins, we call her.
Sure, thank you. Uh, the audience redeemed yourselves there for participating. So, uh, one thing I noticed when we were all dancing around in a circle holding hands, I didn't see a single sad looking face in that crowd that was dancing. They were all smiling. Wasn't that nice? You should always dance like that, right? <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're going to do one more song and then I understand the agenda. There's uh, another group of, of uh, people that are going to be coming after us to demonstrate their, their cultural songs and believe dances as well. So we're going to do one more song that's called the intertribal type of song. What that means is all tribes come in and dance. So whether you're Ojibwe, Cree, Oneida, or from somewhere else outside of Turtle Island, you're welcome to come in and dance. This is a straight song, so the drum beat will have a straight beat. And all you have to do is uh, put one foot in the other and dance to the beat of the drum. Move your feet in that fashion. Just like that round dance, how people move to the beat of the drum, you move your feet in that fashion, we do the same thing. And usually the basic steps when we dance are one, two, one, two. Just do two kind of uh, pats with your feet on one foot and two pats on the other. You move forward while you're doing it. That's all you do. And after a while, it'll get, you'll, you'll pick it up. Okay? So once again, I invite you all to dance. And... Um, I encourage you if, you, if you're not quite brave enough to get up and dance, don't worry, it won't hurt you. And um, I encourage you to look at their faces, they look like they're smiling. Okay, so come on up and dance.
We do know Ojibwe word uh, means thank you. And uh, some of our, our three brothers do use this same word. Me which. Can you say that? Me which. That means thank you, Ojibwe. Also in green, swampy green. So uh, I want to thank the audience for coming out and dancing. I want to thank those of you that are, are sitting down and spectating or standing there and uh, taking this all in. Um, thank you for coming here and listening and opening your minds to uh, our, our songs, to our, our dancing, and to the stories. Um, I want to call upon the next group. I hope they're here. But, um, the next group we have coming up is Inuit Throat Singers. And uh, I know one of the ladies in this group, and these are in for a treat. So I'm going to call on Nadla Ladru and Simone Michael to come on up. And uh, we're lucky to have them here. And uh, so I'll allow them to introduce uh, their, their style of, of music and uh, share part of their culture with you. Kichino Ojibwe word means thank you. And uh, some of our, our three brothers do use this same word. Miigwech. Can you say that? Me wish. That means thank you, Ojibwe. Also in green, swampy green. So uh, I want to thank the audience for coming out and dancing. I want to thank those of you that are, are sitting down and spectating or standing there and uh, taking this all in. Um, thank you for coming here and listening and opening your minds to uh, our, our songs, to our, our dancing, and to the stories. Um, I want to call upon the next group. I hope they're here. Um, the next group we have coming up is Inuit Throat Singers. And uh, I know one of the ladies in this group, and these are in for a treat. So I'm going to call on Nadla Ladru and Simone Michael to come on up. And uh, we're lucky to have them here. And uh, so I'll allow them to introduce uh, their, their style of music and uh, share part of their culture with you.
and to, well, we're out berry picking and they're cranky. We we'll start throating uh, their press against our back and they can hear from our back and we will go.
Okay, we still have igloos, but we only use them overnight. Thank you. 